But I do believe this. I think that everything you say yes to, you need to check your motive. That's right. That's right. Why am I doing this? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Well, uh, I am so honored because uh, I asked Joyce if she would sit down with me for just a little while. Last time when she was at our church, uh, you and I talked about uh, burnout. Right. We talked about rest. Yep. And uh, we, we kind of shared similar war stories right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. about things that we wish we would have done differently. And uh, so I just, these are young men and women of God that love the Lord and God's using them greatly. And I think probably the biggest enemy is being overworked right. and saying yes yeah. too many times. Yeah. And so I just wanted to just share any war stories <laughs> <laughs> or any, any words of wisdom with these young leaders. Well, first of all, hello, and I'm honored to have the privilege to speak to you. And I do believe that people who have been through a lot can save you a lot of trouble if you will really take it to heart. You know, first of all, let me say that different people have different sets of issues. First of all, I come from a background of being sexually abused by my father, so... I started out feeling like my worth, looking for my worth in what I did. Mm. It took me a long time to find out the difference in what I call my who and my do. Mm. I had to know who I was in Christ mm. and that it wasn't just what I did. Secondly, I am a natural, I'm a choleric type A personality, whatever personality test you take. And so I'm motivated by work. I, I'm motivated by accomplishment. And uh, uh, I, I, a lot of people didn't think that I would be able to do what I felt like God was calling me to do. And so maybe there was a part of me that just wanted to prove to them that they were wrong. But I've been teaching now for 45 years. And the first five years were not hard. I just taught a couple of home Bible studies a week. Then I went to work at a church for five years. And it got a little bit harder because it was back in the 80s when the Word and Faith movement was going on and we were having week-long camp meetings and, you know, just busy, 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 busy and just never doing anything but going all the time. And then when we started Joyce Meyer Ministries, uh, then you have a whole other set of responsibilities. You've got the financial responsibility. You've got the... Uh, being afraid half the time nobody will come <laughs> and trying to trying to hear from God and know know what you should do and you know know when to step out what the right timing is and so I can literally say that until four years ago pretty much all I did was work wow. and um, you do work hard when you're in ministry, and there's nothing wrong with that. Anybody that's going to be a success is going to work hard. But you have to learn what to say yes to and what to say no to. And I got sick four different times from overwork. Mm. And but I don't even think that I knew that I was working. I don't, I don't think that I knew that I was doing something wrong, to be honest. I really don't. I think, you know, it was just what you did. Yeah. I mean, you just... Yeah. You're working for Jesus, but it's kind of interesting. You can't, even when you're working for God, you can't break his laws of rest yeah. just because you're doing it yeah. in his name. And uh, it would frighten me a little bit when I would get sick, but I'd get over it in two, three, four days, and I'd go right back to doing what I did. I mean, I was, I was teaching and writing books and traveling overseas and, you know, just... It was ridiculous. I look back now, and I, I don't know how I even stayed alive. But four years ago, I, um, I started getting really bad taste in my mouth, and my, my mouth would burn. And um, it would be that way for just two or three days, and it would go away. And um, sometimes I'd put a little peppermint in my water and drink that, and that would make it better, and then it wouldn't bother me for a while, and then it would, I'd have another little episode, and then it wouldn't bother me for a while. Well, in December of 2017, I woke up one morning, 
and it was so bad. I mean, my mouth was dry. I could hardly speak. I felt like my roof of my mouth and my tongue was on fire. Mm. My blood pressure shot up. I was just, I was shaking. I just, I was a mess. And uh, long story short, doctors and went in the hospital in Houston and uh, a doctor friend there had them run every kind of test imaginable and they came back and said, you have got the best blood work of anybody we've ever seen your age. Well, you know, you hate it when you feel like you're coming unglued and they tell you there's nothing wrong with you. And so, long, long story short, they finally said, you have just got extreme adrenal fatigue mm -hmm. from working too hard for too long. <clears throat> I also spent four years walking five miles every day. And I, I'm kind of bullheaded, so when I say every day, Robert, I mean every day. I walked in the rain. I walked if it was cold. I walked if it was hot. I mean every day. I'd go out and do a conference and come home, get up the next morning and go walk. Well, people tried to tell me, but I don't listen real well. I don't know if you listen better than I do, but, no. you know, I listen now. But my husband would say, you don't need to go out and walk today. You just did a conference. You need to rest. No, I'm walking. <laughs> and I think there was even a certain amount of pride in that and saying, oh, I walk five miles every day. I read a cute little thing. This lady said I named my dog five miles so I could tell everybody I walk five miles every day. <laughs> and uh, uh, first time I had to cancel a speaking engagement because I I mean, God had me pinned down. You can't do what I do if you don't have a voice. And I couldn't, mm. I couldn't talk good enough to preach. Well, it turned out I had something called burning mouth syndrome, but almost nobody had even heard of it. Now you can find more information about it on the Internet. It's getting to be more widely known. And it can be caused by stress. It can be caused by hormones. I think mine was just caused by stress. I think I just pretty much just fell apart. And uh, so when I read your book, Take the Day Off, and you said you found yourself in the closet floor crying because you didn't have any clean underwear. <laughs> I, didn't, I, thought, I didn't want you to bring that up, I, but that's okay. I thought, been there, done that. And I just got... So the, so the diagnosis was extreme ad adrenal fatigue, and my prescription was rest for 18 months. Rest for 18 months. My first comment was, well, what do you do when you rest for 18 months? And they, so the doctor that was a friend of mine, uh, happened to be Paul Osteen, and uh, he said, that's your problem. It's like doing, 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 doing. And when I look back, I'm not sorry that I worked hard, but I wish that I would have said no to things that I could have and should have said no to. Part of it was trying to prove my worth and value. Part of it was just that I'm a hard worker. Part of it was people pleasing. And you know, when you, when you reach a certain place, everybody wants you to do them a favor. And that gets hard because when you have people that you love and they're friends and they ask you for a favor, you feel like you should do it, but there's not just one of them. There's hundreds of them. And, you know, can you forward my book? Can you, you know, all these different things. Can you come to my conference? And, and then I went through the stage, well, God told me that you're supposed to be. And I finally got, thought, well, God didn't told me, and so I'm not going to do it unless he tells me. So I, find, I had to learn that I had to do what, what I needed to do to keep our ministry good and strong and not go do all this stuff for other people and then still have to do what I needed to do for ministry. Now, don't misunderstand me. I love to do things for people. And I, and I do things for people. And I, I do favors for people. But I, I, I do about that much of it now compared to this much of it. Yeah. And I just had to make my mind up that if somebody was my real friend, if I said no to them... Good. And they didn't want to be friends with me because of that. Then they weren't a friend. Yeah, that's good. To that's begin good. with, you ha you have to get to the point where you're going to follow God yeah. and not people. And so when I started trying to make decisions about what to say yes to and what to say no to, 
Because, I mean, I have cut out a lot of stuff in the last four years. The things that I came to was do what only you can do and start letting other people do some of the stuff that you can do, but you don't have to do. And some of it was even other people, the people around me, because they would say, well, this will be better if you do it, and that will be better if you do it, and this will be better if you do it. So it wasn't just me. Yeah. It was like even expectations from other people. Yeah. So my falling apart scared them too, and we started letting other people do different things. And so now I basically do my writing. I do my television. I do my conferences. I preach in a handful of churches a couple times a year. Uh, especially if they have good TV equipment, so I get good TV shows out of that. And um, I do a lot of resting, and I, I really love it. My favorite thing now is quiet, and I don't like to go out at night. My kids make fun of me. The street lights are coming on, Mom. You better get home. <laughs> I uh, Now, you know, I'm older, and so naturally... Sure. You know, when you're younger. I mean, when I was 50, I was running all over the planet and just starting on TV. But I'm not 50 anymore. And even though I don't maybe look my age or even feel my age, I am my age. And so I love something that uh, Dr. Henry Cloud said. He wrote, put this in one of his books, and this is a good thing for you women and men to remember he said, anybody who thinks they can always do what they've always done is a fool. <laughs> and so you, you have to constantly be making changes. Even where you're at now, you've made some quality decisions, but by the time you're another 10 years older, you'll have to make even some more quality yeah. decisions. Yeah. And... Um, I'll say one more thing, and you can ask me okay. another question. All right. Well, I, well you, you hit something right at the first that went off at me like a rocket, and all of it was phenomenal. But um, I'm, we're talking to younger leaders. Right. And when I was younger, and I started getting the invitations from the big people, I those I just couldn't say no to. I know. I know exactly and, what and you mean. It was, it was in me, it was an inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. It was something I grew up with. It was a low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering how many times did that affect you and how did you overcome that when so-and-so, you were now getting to preach for so-and-so. <laughs> I mean, how, I how do we tell younger leaders you can't? You got to somehow deal with that? your identity in Christ and, and not that. Well, to be honest with you, it's kind of hard. Sometimes people just won't listen until they have some experiences themselves. Yeah. I mean, I know I've talked to younger people that are just on fire for God that are doing phenomenal things, and I watch them just go and go and go and go and go. And I've tried to talk to them, and sometimes they just won't listen. And they say that a lot of people that have been abused or who have inferiority complexes make great leaders because they will work until they almost die trying to prove that they're worth something. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you can do more. You know, the people we're talking to are young, and they can, they can do more. And you can do it for a period of time, and any time you're going to start a new ministry, you're going to work hard, and you're going to work really hard for a long time getting it up and running but God will start giving you warning signs and that's what people have to pay attention to yeah. you know we don't well what do I mean by warning signs okay let's just say a lot of, a lot of ministers have problems in their marriages get into affairs get divorces and all kinds of stuff well let's just say that your wife says to you I feel like I never see you anymore that's a warning. I feel like we're growing apart. That's another warning. And so if you would listen to those warnings and make a change when you hear those warnings are, you know, your back hurts and your head hurts <laughs> and something else hurts. And 
pretty soon you're getting irritated with everybody because you feel like you're tied in knots all the time and you blame everybody. Well, those are warning signs that something is going wrong and you need to do something before it gets any worse. We don't just need to keep yeah. medicating it, yeah. you know, till you get to the point where we don't have any choice. And I, I do a teaching called Ignored Warnings, and mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times, even, the, even these young people, when you get really, really super tired to the point where you're getting cranky and hard to get along with, take a couple of days off and rest. And something that Darlene Sheck told me that really helped me when I started wanting to know how to, what to say yes to and what to say no to, because I knew I couldn't keep saying yes to everything. And I went through exactly what you did, and I have said no now to some things that I would have never, 20 years ago, had the guts to say no to. And to be honest, and I don't mean this to sound wrong, I don't care who it is now, I don't care how big of an event it is, if it's going to take too much out of me, I won't go do it, and if I try to, my family won't let me. Like, I would love to go overseas again, because I've been to India nine times, and Africa, and all over the place, and I would love to go back out of the country, but they won't let me go, because the jet lag is too hard on me. And when I said to Darlene, how do you know what to say, say yes to and what to say no to, she said this, and I thought it was brilliant. She said, before I say yes to anything, I sit down and I think through what it's actually going to take for me to do it. Mm. How long is the flight going to be? How long have I gone gone from my kids? How many times am I going to have to change hotels? I mean, I went to Australia one time, and in 22 days I preached 21 times. Well, that's stupid. Yeah. You know, in three different cities. I look back now and I think, that was, that was stupid. You know, I could have preached 15 times and had a, a day of rest in between. Yeah. And so, like, now... I'm getting ready to read an audio book, and that's a little hard on my voice. And so I used to do them in two days, straight through, get it done, bang, bang, move on to something else. Now I take a week, and I take a day in between mm. to rest my voice. And so you can do so many things if you'll just add in that Sabbath. Now, you know, what you said in your book was so brilliant about the Sabbath it's a gift to us. It's not like a law that we have to follow. It's a gift to us, and that doesn't mean it has to be on Sunday, but we need that rest. It's a time to rest and rebuild and build your body up. But I do think that maybe people need to ask themselves, why do I feel that I need to do this? It's good. Why can't I say no? Yeah. yeah why can't great. I stop? I had... Dr. Don Colbert told me one time, he said, you, you have kept the gas pedal to the floor so long that now it's stuck there and you can't get it off. And he said, your mind is stronger than your body. Now, that's an interesting statement. It was like, my body was crying out, help me, I'm sick. But my mind was so strong and I was so determined and, you know, when you have a call from God in your life, you're, you're passionate about it. I mean, you, you want to do everything you can to serve God. Yep. But we do have to be careful in the kingdom that we don't just have the same problems the world does, where we're just trying to outdo somebody else and be the biggest and the best and the most and yeah, yeah. all that. So one more question, and then I'll let you close with whatever you want to close with. Um, you know, we're... we're leaders in our organizations, pastors or organization, whatever it is. But you talked about your family. Mm -hmm. So I have a, a group um, that's my lead team, but then uh, a friend of mine that's been friends 30 years, and I submit every speaking request to them. That's good. And it goes to them first, and about only about 5% of it ever gets through because right. they know this isn't yet. And we, and we also sat down with Henry Cloud and said, what's God called you to do? Mm -hmm. How effective will this be? You know, how efficient will this be? How much energy will right. this take? Yes. Kind of the ease he just took us through. So so when you're the leader, would you recommend that you actually submit your schedule or, or somehow get input on your schedule from your family and your people around you who know you well and, you know? Whatever, whatever way you... You do it 
you have to be humble enough to listen to what some of the people around you are saying, especially if you respect them and you know that they love you. Yeah. And if I would have listened, even like those four years when I was walking five miles a day, I can't tell you how many people told me. My chiropractor told me you need to take a day off. My husband told me. My kids told me. Mm -hmm. And I did not listen to anybody. And any time that you're not going to listen to anybody, you're going to end up getting yourself in trouble. Now, you know, whether they need to submit their whole schedule to somebody or not, I don't know. I think you and I have to do that at this point because we pushed ourselves to the point where we got sick. But I do believe this. I think that everything you say yes to, you need to check your motive. That's great. That's really good. Why am I doing this? Yeah. yeah. You know, That's why good. am I doing this? That's I mean, good. I, as somebody just recently <laughs> said, if if you come, we'll give you thus and so honorarium. And it was was big. And why well, can't take it just... Yeah. I'm losing my integrity if I take it yeah. just because of the money. Yeah. Because I wouldn't do it if... You know, so we have to ask ourselves why we're doing things and be honest because God doesn't really care so much what we do as he does why we're doing it. That's good. So if our motive isn't right, am I doing this just to look like a big shot? Yeah. Am I doing this to keep up with everybody else? And, you know, one of the things that you can do is listen to yourself. And if you're constantly talking about what you're doing, especially if it gets over into bragging. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you know, I mean, sometimes now because I know better, I'm on the other side of it. I mean, you get together with a bunch of preachers, and <laughs> it's just like a contest to see who can tell you the most of yeah. what they're doing and how big their church is. And, you know, my church is the third biggest in the you know, and all this yeah. stuff and all the important people I know and name-dropping, and it just... God doesn't want us to live like that. He wants us to do what we do for him, for right reasons, and to listen to him in the midst of doing it, and to work, but to rest. Yeah. Even God rested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty big one there. Okay, so my last question, and then you, uh, if you have, or if you said you had something else you want to share, but um, if you could go back and and talk to yourself 30 years ago when the ministry was really taken off mm-hmm. and all these things were happening and you could give yourself one or two pieces of, of advice, what, what would you say? Well, I would, I would hope that I could not be a people pleaser and just be a God pleaser because if you are a people pleaser, you're going to take things for the wrong reason. And if you go and do something that you really don't want to do just because you're afraid somebody's not going to like you if you don't, that's not a right reason. I would have done probably 95% of what I did, but the 5% that I didn't have to do, if I would have taken just that time and rested, I might have not got in the condition that I was in. I would uh, I would pay more attention to the warnings that my body was giving me, and I would let other people around me do some of the things that they could do. And one of the things, Pastor Robert, that really helped me was I started to measure fruit compared to effort. Mm-hmm. And so, like, is the effort I'm putting in this is the fruit I'm going to get from this, is it equivalent to the effort that I'm putting into it? So if I'm going to work, 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 to go do something for somebody else, and it's going to take four days of my time, why am I doing that? Do I really just love this person? I want to do them a favor. Do I really believe that this is what God wants me to do? Or... Am I doing it just because it's a big thing and I want to be able to say that I did it? Or I want to see my 
my picture on the <laughs> the magazine, you know, that I'm one, one. It's amazing what happens, how things change when you start asking yourself why, why you do things. And I just, I guess in closing, I just want to say you're valuable, you're precious to God, you have an anointing and a wonderful call on your life, and you need to protect it. Don't wear yourself out to where my husband has a saying that he always says, fast and fragile, slow and solid. And so be a little patient. Use some common sense, which I really believe wisdom is sanctified common sense. And take care of yourself. Even little things like try to get seven, eight hours sleep a night. Drink plenty of water. Get some exercise. Don't eat excessive amounts of sugar. There's little things like that that you can do that will really help your health if you will do that. And don't think that you're the one person that can do the wrong thing and get by with it because eventually it always catches up with you. Wow. Well, well thanks. Thank you. Thanks for sitting down with us. And uh, I, I just pray I know this will, God will use this in your life. And I love you young leaders. And, um, so just take the what the Lord spoke to you today and then get away with the Lord and spend some time and just say, Lord, these things jumped out at me, and what do I need to do about this? And I love you guys so, so much. God's going to use you for the kingdom, but don't let the devil. The devil has right. a steel toe. <laughs> exactly in other words, right. once he gets it in just the door, Right. He's going to come in and he's going to try and destroy you. And we've seen so many men and women who've just fallen away from their call of God. Can I say one more thing? Yes, absolutely. A doctor told me, remember I told you I got sick four times. Yeah. And he told me, every time you do this to yourself, it's harder to come back the next time. Mm -hmm. And so people might wonder, since I had such a terrible time four years ago, where am I at now and how am I doing now? And I would say that probably on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm at about a 7. But I, I still don't have the stamina and the energy that I used to have. But in a way, it's probably God's blessing to me because, to be honest, if I did, I'm afraid I would go right back. So sometimes God will put a governor on us <laughs> just to protect us yeah. because we don't always have enough common sense to do what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm at the point now where I have to rest. If I don't, then I'm going to get myself in trouble. Yeah. Well, um, unfortunately, I'm there too after yeah. my incident four years ago too. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I hope this helps you and we love you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Hey everyone, I'm Pastor Robert, and thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. Be sure to share what God is teaching you in the comments below so that it might encourage others. And click the subscribe button and then tap the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget, you can watch full episodes anytime right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.